Welcome to another edition of Big Whiteboard Wednesday. So, today we're just going to talk about tides. This is something that I get asked about a lot. Uh, Guiones, player Guiones here in Nosara is the beach that we use for most of our coaching and, and we're really lucky because we can surf it on all the tides but it does change as the tide moves in and out and actually what happens at this beach is fairly typical for a lot of beaches all over the world. N not for all of them, some of them vary a little bit but what I'm about to explain to you is true for like maybe 80% of beaches so it's quite a good thing to understand. So what I've drawn here is, is this line which really represents the bottom of the ocean, okay? And this little house and the trees, of course, the land. This is the bit of the beach. And then you can see it really drops off to deep water right here. This line here is our low tide water height. Okay, so what happens is when the waves come in, and, that, and that's represented by the little red squiggles here, as it comes in, the, the bottom of the ocean gets a lot shallower and that's what causes the wave to break. So it goes from being very deep and you can see the wave is completely flat and then it gets a little bit shallower and that wave starts to just jack up a little bit and then it very, very quickly goes from deep to shallow and that causes them to go from being not very steep to breaking very, very quickly over this very short period of time, okay? Those are the sort of waves where you look at them and they sort of go <laughs> and break very, very fast. They're quite difficult to surf, but they're also the sort of waves that are gonna barrel. For a wave to barrel, it has to jack up that quickly in order to have enough force to throw the lip out away from the wave and create that tube. But certainly not something that we want as beginners, okay? Something that, as a more experienced shortboarder, we might enjoy surfing. The advantage of low tide, though, is that the wave then breaks and it's got this long run-in where it then goes very gradually from deep to shallow. So we have these long run-ins of white water, which makes it great for you know, teaching beginner lessons. When people are surfing in the white water, low tide is fantastic because you can have 50 yards coming in in a white water wave, experimenting with all the trimming, carving, stalling, accelerating, and various tricks and whatnot that we get you guys doing in the white water. So, Low tide, out the back, the waves are more powerful and they break much faster. On the inside, in the white water, you have these long, forgiving, soft, gentle white water waves because the waves used up all its power when it was out the back. High tide is almost the exact opposite. So now the water level is a bit higher, represented by this blue line here, and what happens is, as the wave, again represented by this little red squiggle here, as it approaches this, this bank where it goes from very deep to very shallow, it does make the wave stand up, but not enough for the wave to actually break. So what happens is the wave stands up, but it doesn't break, and now the water's going uh, from deep to shallow much more gradually over this period. So what we have is this really big window from here to here, where the wave is steep enough to catch, but not already broken. So whereas at low tide we had this kind of, this much space to catch the wave in as an unbroken wave, at high tide, we've got this much space, so it makes it really gentle, really, really forgiving. Uh, you can get away with making a lot of mistakes at high tide and still getting into the waves. However, when the tide's really high, it does mean that the waves aren't using up all of their power when they're out the back. So when you're on the inside, you've got these, these short white water rides coming in and sometimes they've still got a lot of punch behind them. Now, this is a sort of a, what we call a spring high and a spring low. Spring tides doesn't mean they happen in the spring. It means that they're really big. You have a big high, high tide and a low, low tide. And this is very typically what happens. It goes in two week cycles. And for a lot of the time, you actually have the opposite of spring tides, which are what we call neap tides. When the tides don't move all that much and they kind of stay here in the middle. And actually you've got a pretty happy medium between both where you can surf out the back and on the inside. But when you have the spring tides every two weeks, that's when you really notice this pronounced difference. So as a rule of thumb, if you're a sort of a beginner, you're building your confidence, surfing in the white water is great at low tide, out the back, not such a great idea, just that hour or two either side of low tide. High tide, that's the time to be going out the back and building your confidence. But if you're maybe small, if you've got kids, surfing right on the inside in the shore break at high tide, not such a good idea because the waves are still coming in. The reason we get these, these neap tides and the spring tides are just very simply when you have the moon, so this is the earth and you've got the moon here and you've got the sun here, not quite to scale obviously, when you've got the moon pulling that way and the sun pulling that way then you get neap tides, the tides move not all of that much because 
the moon and the sun are pulling at 90 degrees to each other. When you have the moon and the sun either pulling like that, so that they're both pulling, they're pulling in opposite directions, or you have them on the, the same side, so that they're both pulling the same way, well you can imagine it's like water sloshing in a bathtub. It moves much, much more, and that's when you get those spring tides, the really, really big ones. So that's why you'll notice that it always goes in those two-week cycles. Anyway, I hope that's helpful in uh, planning when you're going surfing, and uh, yeah, see you next time. Thanks for joining me.